It was just another normal day for Abu Omar. He was on his way to pray in a local mosque in Milan, Italy. Everything around him seemed exactly like it always had. He had been living in Milan for over two years and had walked down the same high wall streets dozens of times. Except today, he wouldn't make it to the end of that street. You see, the Italian police and CIA had been tailing him for months, watching his every move. Leading up to America's invasion of Iraq, Abu Omar was suspected of radicalizing men to join the fight against the West in the Middle East. And for the CIA, this meant just one thing. He was a target. His kidnapping was planned for weeks. A massive team of CIA officers had been watching him, waiting for their chance, and the day had finally come, as Abu Omar walked down that quiet street. In seconds, a man jumped out, identifying himself as a police officer, asking for Abu Omar's identification. Almost immediately after that, another group of men appeared behind him. In an instant, they grabbed him, shoved him in a white van, and sped off. In the van, they drugged him, and next thing you know, he wakes up to the sound of prayer and Egyptian Arabic being spoken. Abu Omar was successfully kidnapped and sent to Egypt. The CIA team had kidnapped him back to his home country, where over the next four years, he was tortured with some of the most horrific methods imaginable without ever being charged with a crime. But he maintained his innocence right to the end and eventually got released as a broken man. And the CIA officers who kidnapped him? Well, they made some stupid mistakes, like using unencrypted cell phones and booking into hotels together. An Italian judge even indicted 26 CIA agents involved, but the extradition request for those agents never went through. Abu Omar's case wasn't unusual. Since the start of the war on terror, hundreds of people have been kidnapped by the CIA and dropped off in other countries to be interrogated as part of their extraordinary rendition program. You see, under American law, there are very strict laws against torture. On American soil, CIA officers can't be pulling off people's fingernails, they can't hang them by their feet for hours on end, and they can't inject them with drugs to make them talk. But in other countries like those in the Middle East, these practices happen every day. So when the CIA really wants to break someone, they'll ship them off to their friends abroad who will get the job done for them. That way, America keeps its hands clean and maintains its image as the human rights upholder of the world. In other words, extraordinary rendition is a neat loophole that allows the CIA to outsource their torturing, much like how companies outsource their manufacturing to China. Now, as a new CIA recruit, there's a lot you can learn from the mistakes of the Abu Omar operation. If you're going to make it into one of the most secretive, morally gray CIA teams in the world, you're going to have to master their methods. So welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Extraordinary Rendition, also known as Kidnapping, CIA Edition. The CIA values skill above all. To them, your skills are more important than your educational background, your references, or your cover letter. In life, it's the same thing. The right skills can lend you any job or business in the world, not the degree you have. And that's where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community that focuses on helping people all over the world rediscover their curiosity, passion, and love for learning. They have classes on everything, which means there really is something for everyone on Skillshare. Whether you're looking at enhancing an existing skill, learning something completely new, or completely changing the course of your life. Plus, there aren't any annoying ads or interruptions, so you can focus on just learning. And with new premium classes being added all the time, you'll never get bored and you'll have access to topics like this class on graphic design basics. Core Principles for Visual Design is taught by Ellen Lupton and has over 141,000 students. Or this class on real productivity, how to build habits that last. It has 68,000 students and is taught by author and entrepreneur Thomas Frank. And if you're interested in a new career pathway, why not check out Intro to User Experience, Fundamentals of Usability. It's taught by Marie McCloskey and has over 25,000 students. From this class, you can learn a skill that earns a base pay of around $115,000 a year. So if you want to up your skill level and do what you love, sign up for Skillshare right now by pausing the video and clicking the link below. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to do that will also get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring what Skillshare has to offer right now. Pause the video and click the link below to join now. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. As an extraordinary rendition team, your first lesson is to learn how to spot a target. They'll tell you targets for these operations must always be high value, worth the risk of getting caught. But that's nowhere near the truth. You see, dozens of old CIA targets eventually turn out to be innocent. 
You just have to have a reasonable belief that the person you're going after could be valuable to the CIA. Once you do that, you pretty much have the go ahead. Whether it's a known terrorist's second cousin, or it's just some guy that you think might know something that could help you nail the real targets, it doesn't matter. The pool of people we can kidnap is pretty much infinite, because we can always find a legal reason for kidnapping him later. Now that you've found your next unsuspecting targets, it's time to justify your actions. You need to make everyone believe you're gonna kidnap this guy because you absolutely have to. That if you don't kidnap him right now, more innocents are gonna die. Do you want the blood of the innocents on your hands? Then let us kidnap this guy. Tell your higher ups he has obvious links to terrorism. Say he has vital information concerning national security. Explain that by capturing and forcibly extraditing him, you'll be taking a known threat off the streets. As long as your justification boils down to it being important for national security, you are good. And if anyone asks why we need to kidnap him and move him into a different country, we'll just say that there's a better chance to extract information if the target is interrogated in his native language and by people who are culturally informed. It's worth to justify CIA kidnappings hundreds of times before, and it's bound to work again this time. Now that you've found your target and gotten permission to make him disappear, it's time for the actual kidnapping. And yes, there's the guy for that too. Step number one, surveillance and planning. This is where you get a team together and track every single second of your target's life. This may take days, weeks, or months. If he leaves his apartment at 8.24 AM every day to buy a pack of cigarettes at the corner store, well, you follow him and watch. If he uses a public bathroom near the park, you follow and watch. Every move this guy makes has to be carefully observed and recorded. Remember to switch team members around so he doesn't notice the same people following him around. Once you've established his routine, when he does what and why, it's time to pick the moment when he's the weakest, the most exposed. That is when you will strike. Step number two, the kidnapping. Unlike the CIA team in Italy, your main objective is to get your man off the streets and disappear as quickly as possible without leaving a single trace of evidence behind. People cannot know this was a CIA op. Use burner phones to communicate and always be aware of your surroundings. You don't want to be held up by the cops mid kidnapping. Then choose a day that is as normal as any other. Follow your target to the most vulnerable spot in his daily routine, and from there you grab him. Some of the best places to do this include fake roadblocks and quiet streets, at an isolated ATM where he's drawing cash. Make it quick, use chloroform if you can, and make sure there are no witnesses. Once you get him in the getaway car, you are halfway there. Your next step is to get him out of the country. Step number three, Xville. Here's where America's superpower status comes in handy. According to a 2001 secret NATO agreement, America and its allies have blanket overflight clearances for flights associated with operations against terrorism. This makes it easy to head straight to a nearby airstrip, drag your prisoner onto a private jet, and take off within minutes of the kidnapping. By the time someone notices your guy is missing, he'll be long gone. On the plane, the prisoner is stripped, shaved, photographed, and kept shackled, blindfolded, and wearing earmuffs. Now that you have your target secured, set your destination for the nearest CIA black site. You're not being fulsome in your replies. You cannot force me to tell you something I don't know. <laughs> now that you have your prisoner in custody, it's time to give the CIA interrogators the first shot at breaking him. Who cares if he has no idea why he was kidnapped, or even if he's the wrong person? If he was approved as a target, he needs to be questioned. And that is where CIA black sites come in. Black sites used to be a myth, something only mentioned in movies or books. But the truth is, after the start of the war in Afghanistan in 2002, the CIA created secret prisons where they could hold or interrogate possible terrorists. These sites were located all over the Middle East and the rest of the world, and became known as dark prisons and eventually black sites. One of the most famous was Abu Ghraib, an Iraqi prison where members of the US Army and CIA committed hundreds of human rights violations against their prisoners. Over the years, presidents have tried regulating the methods used in CIA-enhanced interrogation. Some of the approved methods include waterboarding, leaving prisoners in extremely confined spaces, forced nudity, and sleep deprivation. But in a country as far away as Iraq, these rules are rarely followed. Instead, the same interrogation methods the US prosecuted countries like Japan for are committed by Americans on hundreds of detainees, including women. Many of them are later released without charge. So you take your prisoner to a black site. It could be a foreign country or even on prison ships in international waters. You get interrogators to give them everything they've got, hoping to break them and extract intel. And if their methods don't work, or they're constrained by pesky human rights laws or international criticism, well then you can resort to plan B, letting other countries do the dirty work for you.
This is where you drug your prisoner again, shove him onto a plane, and send him off to a country with little to no care for human rights and no human rights watchdogs. Countries like Syria and Egypt are top picks. Here, local soldiers and police officers are well versed in committing crimes against humanity. Here, your prisoner would be subject to some of the worst torture methods imaginable, stuff I definitely can't mention on YouTube. They can keep him in a cell for years at a time without being charged, they can do pretty much whatever they want in the name of extracting information, and if your target ever becomes obsolete, they're just as happy to get rid of him too. All of this happens while US foreign policy strictly states, no assistance may be provided under this part to the government of any country which engages in a consistent pattern of gross violations of internationally recognized human rights. And if people start asking too many questions, well then, it's time for the cover-up. According to every US president ever, America only uses enhanced interrogation techniques set up by the Bush administration. And when it comes to handing prisoners over to governments who don't care as much, well we can't control what other countries are doing. Sure, somewhere some CIA or government officer knows exactly how many fingernails these other governments have pulled off, how many times prisoners have been beaten, or just how long it takes to break an accused terrorist into a sobbing wreck. But you know, out of sight, out of mind. Even though the UN prohibits sending people to countries where there's substantial grounds to assume they'll be tortured, America has always maintained that it just can't be sure what methods these other countries used. And the biggest cover-up excuse of all? Everything is totally legal, as long as these countries promise they're not going to torture the people delivered to them. And when those promises are broken? Well, what can you expect from such a lawless country? It's not our fault they don't follow the rules. This video has definitely been on the edge of what is monetizable on YouTube. That is why I started making private documentaries that you can only watch by clicking the join button below. That way, I can make even more touchy videos like the next one coming out on Efri Jepstein or our previous ones on Monsanto and MK Ultra. These are things they would never teach you in business school for a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the price. And if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email me and I will personally refund you the money. So yeah, click that join button below. And if you're new here, subscribe for the best documentaries on money, power, and crime. That's it. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.